pollution issue to describe what this cognitive domain is and how is the Bloom's classification that is knowledge, comprehension, the application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation methods are used for, for assessing a person's knowledge. So I pass. Afternoon, everyone. Now I'll speak about what is cognitive in this domain. So we all know this cognitive domain is the thinking domain, and it is the core of learning. What is we are learning? This cognitive domain is the core of learning, and how we are acquiring the process, and how we are using the knowledge what you have acquired uh, at the right platform. And here, what happens is mainly this cognitive domain it focuses on knowledge that is like recalling and it uh, focus on comprehension how you translate the knowledge what you have learned and application in a new given situation how you are going to apply, apply the uh, learned thing then analysis that is the concepts applying the concepts into the uh, dividing uh, applying in the component form and the synthesis is nothing but building up of the structure and at last is evaluation. It is nothing but judging, like finding a solution, uh, like uh, uh, finally it's like judging. So there are, uh, there are conventionally, there are a lot of tools which is used for uh, uh, assessing the cognitive domain. Uh, the conventional tools mainly as usual used to find out, used were all like uh, discussions, case discussions and uh, tutorials. And mainly it is like quizzes. And even self quizzes also can be made and uh, mostly based on problem solving in clinical scenario and uh, problem based uh, learning and uh, it can be a course, it can be a seminar or even it can be a viva voice also. What all I have explained till now, it is uh, a basic how you assess the cognitive, uh, uh, it's like all the basic tools which you use to assess the cognition. Now in our team, uh, now we are you uh, now we will have a role play and uh, followed by a talk by uh, Vivek sir and uh, chosen three important uh, tools to assess the cognitive domain here which assessment tools for uh, assessing the cognitive domain in bioethics now Vivek sir will follow so the role play is is a 56 year old man he has been instituted in a care home by his family who have abandoned him. They have probably, they have, uh, they want, don't want him to be at uh, their uh, uh, place because of some other, uh, their own reasons. So they put him in a care home, same with the reasoning that the house has been renovated. So you stay for some time in the care home. So, so what happens, the scenario, so here we have, the uh, care providers, uh, Dr. Gilwas, uh, Dr. Kubisha uh, Vishnu, is the uh, patient's uh, family member, a representative from the family, and patient will be Dr. Sunil. That feeling, empathy, was the big highlight. Sir, good morning, sir. I am uh, Vishnu Devi. Uh, he is my father and uh, I came to know about your home that is very, uh, it's very famous. People all suggested when I need an old age home, they all suggested that your home is the best, sir. Sir, uh, one thing is like uh, my dad wants to, uh, like we are planning to renovate our house. So we would like to place our dad in your home such that uh, he will be uh, safe and happy. Once the renovation is done, no, sir, then we will be taking out back that you understood, no? Once the renovation is completed, we will take you back. So is it for only renovation? Uh, how long it will take? Uh, sir, we will complete within three months or six months. Within three to six months, we will complete, sir. The problem, only problem is renovation is uh, like it will disturb us. And additionally, father is like uh, keep on making some mesh in the house and he cannot uh, uh, adjust with the people. And morning, myself and my family members go for job. And when we come in the evening by six or seven, the whole house is totally meshy. And he has a lot of complaints also, sir. That's why. We have, we have a lovely... 
uh, care home and I'm sure he'll be happy because we have every facility, don't worry. We've got every facility, the swimming pool, there's a, a television in every room, there's a recreation center. He'll be extremely happy. I understand that both of you go to work. I understand all those things. Yes. We'll take care of it. Uh, but uh, what I feel is the uh, facility is there, but uh, my family is not there with me. We are, you, we are your family, don't worry. Because my as long as they pay the money every month, they are your family. There. And my grandparents are not there. So, yes, everything is there, but is, I, I will be missing all that things. And uh, I don't know whether they are going to uh, bring me back or I'll be here with you. Don't worry, uh, you just won't miss home. Home. Dad, don't take tension at all. Once the renovation is completed, sir, you see, I assure once the renovation is completed, we will take our bag, uh, father back. As long home. as you like, ma'am, no, no problem at all. This is your word. So you have to follow that word. Dad, don't worry. I'll follow that. You, you please basically understand when the work is renovation work is going on, what you're going to do alone the whole day sitting simply and again it will be a nuisance for you. That's why I'm keeping in the old age home very like you are in a very safe place and you'll be very happy so because your age, age group home. people are there. Your age group people are there and sir is an excellent person. The whole city is speaking a good about this uh, old age home. I have made the right choice and I'll take you back very shortly once the renovation is over. Okay, so there is a matter of some days and then I will go back to my Days home. or months or years, doesn't matter. We are there for you. Now, this is, I'm going to step by step, take you through a process where you can analyze, make a, a basic analogy of how you can dissect this problem and come into a, a ethical answer, get an ethical answer. First, the step one is formulating the moral question of the Delhi market. Do we have to do what is promised to the patient? How many of you would say you would listen to the autonomy of the patient? What did Dr. Sunil actually want? What was this actual need? He wants to stay with his family. Yes, good. He wants to stay with his family. But what is the problem? If this is autonomy, he wants to stay with his family. Yes, that, that's the ethical He was not asked whether no, he, been, he was asked. He, he, he has his feelings. He wants to go back. But then, as a provider, uh, Gilbas is the service provider. What is his moral responsibility? What is his uh, actions? What ultimate actions does he have with himself? What can you do? If you are in Dr. Gilbas' position, what would you do? Take the money, sir. Take the money, sir. Take the money, sir. But serious, what, what do you think, sir? Would you want to do with the problem? So at first is formulate the moral question. What is the problem? The problem is, do we have to listen to the patient and do what is promised to the patient? Do we actually do that? Either... We can either follow the wish of the patient and let him go back to his house or I make him stay where he lives now. These are the two options we have. So then we take the second step of our thinking process. This, I'm taking to, to a thinking process. That is what this domain is all about. A thinking process. How you think. Then clarification of the process. List all negative consequences of on the choices, what the choice? What are the negative consequences? Any of you? What are the negative consequences of the problem we have in here? Yes, to be, be uh, he feels he'll be abandoned by what? By going home or family? The families will not uh, pay for his services. You mean to say? Yeah. The options are here. 
if you follow the patient's wish, then he will go back to his care home and he will have lots of opportunity of helping people. See, one thing is he was happy in the care home. He was doing something useful. He was spending his time. When, when in his home, he was neglected. He was, he was just sitting doing nothing in his house. This is what old people do. No, At but, times, but, uh, but, see, but, you have a real scenario, real life scenario. When no, but, but uh, what's wrong to the care home may not be providing even the therapy. No, they will say they have school, all that. Yes, so but he, no, but, yeah, but in it, in he it. not know how to spend work in a school. No, but heart to heart, he's doing something yes. useful to the society. He's doing something which, uh, which he feels happiness when he's in the care home. No, he feels happy when he's with his family. Yes, but no, he feels. Happiness. There are two types of happiness. There are two types of happiness here. But this is presumption, right? No, no, but there are two types of happiness. You're right in one way. There's happiness in being with family. That is one happiness. Then the other happiness is finding himself useful to the society. That is in the care home. He's finding his social social recreation. He's uh he's he might want to be with this. No, he might but want. We, but if we ask him, we to ask him, will he be happy? He's not able to get along with the people in the house. No, no. Even from a girl, no, 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 no. It is not that he is. Right, so his family doesn't want him. It is not that he doesn't want to be with the family. No, but the daughter his said happiness, that at home he's not. Uh, He's that is what his family people are saying. Maybe true, and he can create a problem in the nursing home. No, but uh, they are ensuring the caretakers, uh, Dr. Gibbs, is ensuring that he's, he's protected. He's protected. His daughter is not taking care. Yeah, which daughter is not taking care. So then we go to the third part that is the application of the question. What was the attitude of the patient when he mentioned his wish? That's what we want to know. What is the attitude? Does he is he very firm in expressing his wish? Will the family members want him to, will accept him back? So these are the three things which you need to understand before you conclude to what the uh, <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't have a choice. Yeah. The basic thing is that the initial that separation yes. till that age she was together with him. Yes, ma'am. And then now we are going to a new setup. Yes. And it becomes inevitable or unavoidable for him to sort of get into the new thing because he's not wanted back in the house. Yeah, he's not wanted. Right. The world is not being wanted this way. Right. But then um, what is the dilemma here? Dilemma is that he has to be protected. If he's in the house, he's been abused. He's, he might not even get his daily food at the right time. That we don't have it. Don't no, call this. Sir, sir. Get he, <laughs> no. <laughs> See, they are working parents, working children. Maybe, they are putting maybe. him, uh, they have the money to have him looked after in the uh, care home. They are not abandoning him. No, they don't want that. They, they don't want him. They, they don't want him in the house because he is not getting along with the other members. So they want him. the same thing even in the nursery. Your problem. We'll do the same thing in the nursery. Yeah. Now, so now we go to step four, analyzing. Yeah. Yeah. Third point, yeah. Third point that you have said. Yeah. I think more than the, you know, what came across in the role play was the emotions of the protagonist at that point in time. Yeah. And that was one of apprehension. Yeah. He's not sure. Are you going to really come back and 
Then you have a true and false questions. All those. Uh, Yeah. 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 Ye
you are assessing the knowledge of the patient knowledge of the student or the learner now here you've done it you know it can be the assessment tool maybe essays or short answers or modified questions and uh, this is a simulated patient problem which you have shown based on which you are going to put some questions i think number one is significance of autonomy or they are asking what article and then there of with autonomy is one the second question can be based on communication and empathy these are the two things you can actually highlight with this which is article 80 i think these are the two things so the cognitive domain is what again the simulated phenomenon you are showing otherwise you must ask them to write a short note on such a autonomy or communication but these are the two domains you are right these are the two components of you are bringing out to this domain am i right yes so i just want to make it clear now one more question one more question so one more so one more the uh, the this program is about assessment it is not about teaching methodology it is not about framing questions about so how are you going to assess the student for that particular domain that's all we want to Even you can use the open book exams. Yes. So, like yes. that. So, what are the tools that if you can mention? Short that's all. Short yes. Short 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 was talking about uh, levels all levels thinking levels so uh, maybe at the level of uh, synthesis not related to this uh, case scenario uh, but we can give them tasks like uh, say for example uh, we can ask to prepare informed consent form and they can submit that consent form so uh, even theoretical part like say for example informed consent maybe for a particular procedure maybe appendix ectomy or tonsillectomy <laughs> That will become a skill, yeah. but in that also, like uh, some points are there. For example, voluntariness. So they will uh, in that informed consent form, they will talk about voluntariness. They will talk about uh, no, it's not being forced. Right. No, okay, okay. sir. Yes. I, I'll ask you in this way. What are the action verb that we that you would you wish to use? Sir, sir you said that uh, you will ask the students to prepare the informed consent. Yes, yes. Preparation is different, okay. right? But you should ask them to explain something that will become the cognitive. Describe the components of right? the Or just mention the components of the informed consent, something like that. So that is what repeatedly we were coming to the same point that what is the each each level, what is the assessment tool? I want to for, for my objective is I just wanted to know whether the student has the road learning. That alone I want to test. Then I will give an open book and I will tell them that, okay, do it. my objective is done. Right? But when I want to go to the higher level, the synthesis or application level or comprehension level, then what I will do, I will go to the a clinical beginning, like other people told, uh, the modified essay questions. We will start with the clinical case and then we will ask a series of questions. right? Or again, you want to have a road learning, just I will say simply, this is the cholesterol level, that's it. So that is what uh, the cognitive domain, and that's what uh, Madam also is expecting. So, uh, because I think uh, the confusion regarding what exactly is expected. Now, when you say, so for example, describe the components of the informed concern. So, we have as a checklist disclosure of information, understanding the information, voluntariness, signature. That's all. So your evaluation will be based on those components. See, the checklist will be that. Yeah, so either way, short essay. Yeah, short essay. That's what I'm saying. Short essay. Short essay. Short essay. Short okay, I think uh, we'll move on to the, you can give a, give a round of applause. We'll move on to the next one.
I think stick to the point assessment tools. Your yours is oh yours is formative assessment. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Dr. Karthik. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Pharmacology in Ramachandra Medical College. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Russell Resorza and his team for giving me an opportunity to present in front of the LIT. So, I'm going to talk about formative assessment in bioethics from Group 4. I have with me Dr. Srikumar Vastavan and Dr. Anush Shah. Anush Sorry. So these are the learning objectives for you today. After this session, you are expected to understand the concept of formative assessment, its purpose in bioethics education, discuss the various tools for formative assessment in bioethics education, translate the applications of formative assessment in your own bioethics classes. So what is assessment in bioethics education? It's a wide variety of methods or tools in bioethics educators use to evaluate, measure, and document the academic readiness, learning, progress, skill acquisition, and educational need of the learner. Now, as everyone uh, told, I also like to reinforce assessment is an engine which drives students' learning. So there are two types of assessment. This has been already covered, summative and formative. Formative is when, when suppose a cook is cooking a soup, when the cook tastes the soup, it's a formative assessment where he can reach in whatever ingredient he wants. Whereas summative is when the customers taste the soup. This has also been told in the previous speakers. I just want to reinforce on this. So formative assessment is basically for learning and whereas summative is for off learning. So some formative, you can give a constructive feedback to the student based on the whatever you're assessing. Whereas summative, you are grading the student and you're giving a judgmental statement. So what is formative assessment? I'll just skip this because it's not my topic. So, okay, the purpose of assessment is to improve the quality. So for this, we have formative assessment where the activities of the learners and teachers undertake to get the information about the learning which has been done. Feedback is the most important component of this, which is given as a constructive form to the student. Now, history of formative assessment. In 1967, it was Michael Sproven who introduced the term formative assessment. Bloom, Hastings, and Madness in the year 1971 was the term we used a lot of formative assessment in different cases of learning. And in Benjamin Bloom's in 1977, used two essential components that is feedback and constructive learning for measuring learning outcomes. So, what are the advantages of this formative assessment? For the teacher, it helps to identify the student who is struggling with a particular task and for operating under misconceptions. And also, it provides improved instruction to address students' learning. It fosters students' motivation on task behavior and self-awareness. For the student, it offers increased feeling of confidence and control. It encourages students to engage in more complex thinking, problem-solving, and hold high expectations of their own learning. It helps students to spend more time on challenging tasks, develop an ability to access their own work, and become an effective evaluator when they are evaluating their peers. Now, a good teacher does formative assessment to redesign or decide how to reach teach or move forward, depending on the student needs. Uh, I wanted to say that formative assessment is a key to success. And the, the, as with other assessment, you also have some issues with formative assessment. You have to be, the faculty has to get ready for a formative assessment. It's a time-consuming process. 
it involves large number of students it will be very difficult to conduct a formative assessment and standardization is the main issue here because each faculty decides their own set of formative assessment standardization will be a very difficult process now there is a cycle which was framed by macmillan in 2007 which is called formative assessment cycle which is there is a evaluation of the student progress is done at the beginning then you give a constructive feedback to the student then you reevaluate and give instructional correctness for the student so this is a formative cycle for assessment okay then there is a shift in the assessment from summative we are slowly moving on to formative in summative we were trying to assess the learn what the student has learned in this case we are trying to know what he has doesn't know that is in formative assessment we are trying to assess what the student has understood and if he has not understood a particular concept we are reinforcing one and from formative and summative assessment from using a result to calculate grades we are moving to a formative assessment where we are trying to use results to inform instruction to the student from end of term assessment by the teachers we are move on to students engagement on the ongoing assessment of their work and others from judgmental feedback which will arm the students motivation we are move on to descriptive feedback which will empower and motivate the students so there is something called competency based for education that which involves a wide variety of methods and tools that educator used to evaluate measure document uh, academic readiness learning progress and student acquisition skill acquisition or educational needs of the learner now as susan ma'am rightly told it's always after assessment should be in line with the objective what you are framing this is according to competency based biotic education initially the competencies will be broken down into objectives and you frame learning outcome towards the objective and it has to form proper you know, teaching learning methods and finally you do a assessment for this now ideal assessment should be rational which will link assessment to the learning objectives and it should be balanced covering all the aspects of the curriculum and the, all the educational domains should be covered now there is a criteria for selecting assessment tool the assessment tool should be reliable that is it should be able to reproduce the results again and again should be valid with accurate result it should have a educational impactment which gives opportunity for feedback as well as for a continued learning process and it should be highly accessible acceptable by the student as well as faculty it should be feasible it should be logically possible to conduct a formative assessment this is according to van and luter it's called as utility model for conducting a formative assessment now the tools for formative assessment so these are some of the tools which you can incorporate in your bioethics classes we have something called hand signal from 1 to 5 brainstorming session exit tickets think pair and share technique and reflective learning these are some tools which can be used as a formative tool now there is something called hand signal where at the end of the class you can ask the participant to show hands from 1 to 5 one indicates so what is this first first it's a formative assessment of the student by having them rate their understanding on a scale of 1 to 5 It's the quickest and easiest way to assess a large group of students. One indicates the student is absolutely lost; he didn't understand anything. Two, he has have a vague idea after the class. Three, the student is in middle, in between the understanding and the not understood. Four, he has a good understanding, and five, he has the mastery over the subject what you have taught. Then you have the brainstorming, which can be used as a formative tool. It's a great tool to assess the prior knowledge on a class on a particular topic. It involves great the generation of great number of ideas no matter how far fetched or without any explanation it is given for a fixed period of time say 5 minutes you post a question to the student for example what is autonomy you give 5 minutes to them to think and comment on those then you can also use exit tickets where this is a this is a tool which is used best for assessing overall achievement of a particular lesson session you give a paper sheet of paper to a student you give 2 to 3 minutes of time to them and you can ask the question like this write the reflection in the class about few minutes or whatever i have taught for you so this can be used as a reflective method then you can do think pair and share technique where you give a particular for example what is uh, beneficence you give a question like this you ask the student the thing you then group them into pair of two you ask them to share their ideas between them and those two students will be sharing to the entire class this is called as think pair share technique and you have reflective writing where uh, the students are asked what was taught to them what so what they will do and finally what's next so this is what they will ask will be asked at the end of the class to write 
Now there are some online formative assessment tools which can be used. Uh, that is Socket, Mentimeter, Kahoot, Polls Everywhere, and Google Forms. These are some online formative assessment tools which can be used even if the student is in remote place. Now there is something called Socket this, which is an interactive digital tool which lets you quiz, grade, and assess on the fly with the speed of learning. This is a socket main page of the dashboard. You can see you can start a quiz or you can conduct a space race or you can also collect exit ticket. This is a picture which depicts the space race where the student has been given a poll. Whoever answers the first, he will get maximum points in the limited time. So this is called a space race, which can be conducted as a formative assessment tool in socket test. Then you have Kahu, which is a game-based assessment tool, which I use in the end of my classes, almost all my classes, which students enjoy the most. Usually there is a ready-made teaching learning method and ready-made questions are there. If you want, you can remotely increase your speed as well as the number of questions you want. So you can create the questions, poll, and you can share with the students. There will be a pin number which has to be shared, which the students can be used remotely as well as in classroom assessment can be done. Then you have something called multimeter, which is a pre-built educational template. You have different templates in this. You can start a poll or interactive word cloud technique. Word cloud is nothing but you ask put a poll and whoever, whichever response you get the maximum, it will be highlighted here. The biggest font will be the maximum response, followed by small font, which will be the peripheral outlet. Then you have Google Forms. This you everyone will be aware of this. The easiest to use poll or for conducting a survey. The best advantage of this is it forms an analysis by itself, or you can use the raw data as an Excel sheet and you can incorporate your own analysis with this. And you have polls everywhere, which includes everyone in the conversation. It will seamlessly engage the audience across hybrid workplace with the love, I mean, live online polling, surveys, questionnaires, quiz, and word clouds. There are so many things you can use with poll everywhere. So this is one formative element which we have framed in our institute for uh, biotechs. So these are some things we can ask, demonstrate the ability to work in a team of peers and superiors, demonstrate commitment to continued learning. You can frame whatever competencies you want the student to address. You can have an appropriate level of training for each one of this. The students, have, the tutor can mention it either doesn't meet the expectation or meets the expectation or not applicable. This indicates the level of appropriateness of the training which the student has undergone. So you can also provide feedback to the student. At the end, the student, I mean, the teacher has to sign with the faculty ID as well as the date. Now to summarize, formative assessment practice when implemented effectively can be a powerful effective tool for learning. Formative assessment involves teachers making adjustments to the instruction based on the evidence collected, providing students with the feedback that can help them in advance their learning. So formative assessment transforms learning. So before I conclude, I'd like to conduct a formative assessment for you right now. So based on my session, give hand signal from one to five. One means you have not understood anything and five, you have understood everything. And two, three, four is in between. Can you please raise and show me? Five. Okay, that is how you have to assess the formative assessment. Thank you. Uh, my teammates wanted to add a few points. Just one minute, but please come back to the second last slide. Yeah, this one. Give me an example of uh, how you conduct this assessment. Ma'am, we will post some biotics case. Post one. I don't, don't have a question right now, ma'am. For example, you can no, ask for me that demonstrate because this is the teacher is evaluating, right? Yes, ma'am. So no, demonstrate the commitment to continue learning. You can't just want to tell you how it will work. Question, ma'am. We will give self-directed learning technique. Ma what we'll do is we will post a paper clipping or a video to the student. We will give few minutes for them to do a group interaction among themselves. Then we will try to discuss, man. In this way, we can find out who is interacting more and who is not interacting. So when you use the word continue learning, is it over a period of time? Man. We usually give vertical learning. Man. We allot them a particular topic. We ask them to do some reflections as well as some basic research on that topic. Then the student has to give an assessment at the end. Man. Yeah, over there. Yeah. You can say.
say that I'm still learning. Yeah. This is not like, I mean, it's not like at the end of the class. Yeah, if you take the class, hard. this won't be after. Yeah, yeah, this is the end of the module. It's a competence case. So yeah. it's over a longer period. Yeah, and and this is usually done period. at the end of a module. It's not under the class. Yes, that's what I wanted to know. Because I got the impression yeah. that you take yeah. a class yes. and then Yes, uh, you can do formative assessment at different levels, not just at the end of the class, you can do at different levels. For end of the module, I have done a formative assessment. Yes, sir, this is a module which runs for two weeks. After the end of two weeks, I will conduct a formative assessment. Actually, actually, what is happening for the SPL initially when it was uh, the regulation came, SDL, the self directed learning sessions. We were supposed to take not, uh, you know, in totality in one go. You are doing it in one uh, week. You are going sensitizing, delegating the job. And in the next week, there is an hour or so. And then you, the students will be accomplishing that task and you will be evaluating. So, I mean, that is continued only. So, even the self directed learning sessions, as per NMC guidelines, they have to be taken like that. I have a question. Is it the same teacher who takes the same class or is it different teachers? Uh, it can, uh, but like if you ask about our institute, it can be different teachers also and it can be the same teacher also and it can be the team also, like two or three teachers. I, I'm just concerned about the continued learning. So how do you assess continued learning if you have multiple teachers coming in uh, then, for example, in one session, if it is my first session, then when I am delegating a job, I am telling that this is the topic, these are your resources, and you go and search up. So that part can be, uh, you know, assessed by me only, by seeing how much actively the student has gone, to for the result, for example, I've gone to uh, and told them like go to the library and do something and search for it and go to the online resource. They have collected, they have put in a group. So that part I can assess. The second uh, to be continued part, the second faculty member is taking that member. That faculty can look after that second part. Like if we have given or allotted. You're saying there's a continuity between all of you. Yeah. And that's how you're yeah, yeah. On. We will delegate our job. The task will be divided into various groups of faculty also, depending on the number of the faculty available at that very moment. Because readiness of the faculty is also important in formative assessment. What they have done over each year. Over a period. Over a period. Right. That is what like and and uh, ma'am, one thing more I would like to add over here. Like for example, there is a platform module. Yes. For example, we have an ad for module. So like uh, sometimes what is happening for the first professional, if I talk about the ad for module which they have given, it has to be done in the beginning of the uh, session and in the end of the session. So that's continued only. So we assess what you have learned, how you have done, and in the end, we assess. First, you should know. No, first we should assess. First, we should assess uh, how many are actually learned it or understood. Next is uh, uh, what you are going to do for those people. And there will be people like uh, Sri Pass who understood everything. What we will do with them also. Uh, uh, what we can give. And finally, finally we come to a conclusion whether the curriculum itself, what are alterations we have to make. So that is the final uh, conclusion that we can come to. No, but uh, routinely when you do the PAL section, the students are very clever. I will show five because I don't want them to call me. So it's a lot of show five.
I think basically, if, uh, regarding bioethics, uh, it's first and foremost is attitude, the attitude of the learners. Number two is uh, uh, it's more or less voluntary. So uh, it's it's not compulsory that you should know things. But actually, uh, this is from my personal view, is that if you really want students to know about bioethics, you put at least five questions in the need. PG entrance course, and you will see every student, every student studying bioethics. <laughs> I have a second. I have a question. I'll second, sir, because what has happened in the professional examination, the guidelines has come like that, that there has to be one question from those modules. So the students read it. And secondly, as sir is saying, Dr. Krishna, like if you tell the student that this has to be done, then they behave accordingly. For example, if I say that there are two marks for your attitudes uh, for whatever exam I am taking, so then they will behave properly because that two marks is going to matter. Formative assessment, is there no. formative assessment see, formative assessment, formative assessment, earlier we used to do that. Based on the formative assessment, we used to give marks to the students. So student knew the whole year that he has to behave properly. Most of the time, uh, uh, most of the time we get uh, confused with the continuous assessment and the formative assessment. We do we we conduct continuously so many formative assessments, and then finally we'll say that it is a formative assessment. We have to be very careful in that. So formative assessment is always for the improvement of the learning of the student. So you need to, yes, immediate feedback has to be there, which has to facilitate the learning of the student further. So that is where we have to be very, very careful. We should not end up with, we have done every week, every day, conducting so many assessments, and you give some, some marks, 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 and finally you are doing the summative assessment, not the formative. Yes, multiple so, submitters, and we say that it's a continuous I assessment. Dr. Mohan, I have a doubt here when you're saying this. Uh, I'm just trying to understand this whole concept of formative assessment. Now we have postgraduate students in the wards, right? And they're a teaching institution. And you, they are allocated uh, cases for uh, follow-up. Now they give us a feedback. So every day in the morning rounds, not every day, maybe, you know, Periodically, there are uh, case discussions that are happening and a feedback is given to the student. You know, you have to take this history, you have to do this, you have to do that, and so on. Would that become part of a formative assessment? Yes. Not daily or depending on yeah. the when you give, when you do it, when you do it in a formal way, and when you do it with a feedback, constructive feedback, which facilitates their learning. Then, then when it is not affecting their past or failed decisions, then it is a classical formative assessment. You can do however you want, but you have to be very careful in framing and designing your formative assessments. It's not so easy like how we are uh, thinking. Exactly. Right? So my question here, going back to the case discussions, I have somebody who's admitted to, uh, for surgery for appendicitis. Surgery is over, three, four days patient uh, is there and gets discharged. You have a house surgeon who's taking care of the person, and while they're reporting back to the surgeon, there's feedback given. 
but there's no opportunity to know whether the person has learned about a particular feedback that was given. Let me go into my own field. So suppose I have somebody has started, uh, the PG says, I will give surgery for a particular patient. I'll say, no, no, you don't give this. Maybe this would be a better molecule. My case sheet will document. I said, so the, the medicine will automatically be changed. But how do I really then know from this format of assessment? How will I know that the person actually knows? Or he might be just writing what I'm telling. So is there any kind of a plug, you know, to capture that? Next day you ask it. Yeah, feedback. Next day you ask it. 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 But that is your giving the order of detail. Here to show that you need the subject. Ma'am, uh, uh, the key thing about uh, formative assessment is the feedback, which helps to improve learning. Feedback can be formal or informal. Many institutions, they have formal sessions you can have, or informal, you can give anywhere you want. Uh, many institutions, they you ideally need to train the students to receive feedback as much as you want to train the student faculty to give feedback. So both sides need to be done. Unfortunately, we're not doing both of them. So that is one thing. And if you look at uh, things like OSCE, uh, role plays and all, ideally we're supposed to have debriefing sessions with them, which is actually basically feedback, uh, feedback on what you've done. So that feedback component is what it makes formative. And we don't have to be correct. You don't have to get past every time. He just needs to keep improving his learning curve. And as we know, different students have got different learning curves. Some have got a different steeper curve, some have got a more gradual curve, but at the end of it, if they're going up, and that's what formative assessment is all about. So I'd just like to, over 30 seconds to share uh, an experience here that this whole issue of formative assessments, it's critical, I believe, that both the teacher and the student are on board. There was an incident when you know the teacher was very brusque. I'm very politely using the word brusque, but you can imagine how the person was, oh, you're never going to learn, you're never going to do this, that kind of a response. So the student over a period of time actually developed his, oh, if I go to this particular teacher, this is, this is going to happen, I'm going to get screened at, and so I don't want to go, but I have to go because I have to report, and so I'll just turn a deaf ear. So the, the selective deafness have just happened as a psychological defense that the person developed. But so this is, I think, a very important that we as learners and teachers, we have to pay attention as to how we are actually doing the process of communicating that feedback. There's something that uh, I have 30 seconds. Ram, uh, Ram, you have very rightly said, actually, the formative assessment has three processes, three inculcated processes. One thing is where the student is going. This, this is the practice in the formative assessment. Like first thing is where the student is going. Second thing is where the student is now. And the third thing is what and how you can do to improve that student's position. Where you wanted him to reach, how you can do it. I mean, this third component is the most important component. Because if even if the student is faking about it, like uh, something, you know, uh, like you are not convinced, even then you have a judgment based on that, you can redesign the formative assessment and then you can uh, make the student reach where you want the student to reach. That's my take on it. Thank you.
it's very challenging. It's a Yes, sir. We have to set up polls, sir, only that we can. So I think that's a key learning that we should be keeping in mind here, that a focus has to be given on how we design the, form, uh, the, the formative, particularly in ethics. Uh, you know, the, many of the other areas will not be that uh, difficult. Uh, so I think that that's uh, because uh, in, in particularly in the effective uh, domain, this tracking will give us an idea of how much internalization is taking place and what way it's that's my thoughts here. Okay, thank you. I, I would just like to add, sir, uh, just as Dr. Russell was saying that, uh, I, for milestones in biotics, I mean, our scientific subjects aside, in biotics, we have to decide the milestones. And that is how you will achieve the objective and you can keep the track also. And accordingly, the formative will be decided on. Um, another one fact I wanted to do, it just skipped my mind. Uh, think parent share. You, you said think parent share. Where's the assessment in it? No, uh, we think pair share, it's a methodology. No? Yeah, assessment. So we are just focusing on assessment. Maybe in the share, you can come to a consensus and say, okay, we discuss autonomy and we find it, yes, we need it, or something you can say and you know and I know, like that we can have a rough maybe, but otherwise it's not an assessment tool per se. Yeah, that's what I, no, we are, again, that's it. Today we are only focused on assessment tools. So as we said, formative, everything in formative feedback notwithstanding is part of the whole process. Uh, you saw the cycle they, uh, they had put up. The, the process of formative is very, very important. And without formative, it cannot be done. So we have to decide, all of you all are trainers, all of us have to sit and decide what are the milestones, what are the assessment tools that is Mm, feasible, you know, and easy and comfortable within our multi uh, evaluator, multiple evaluators, you know, in your biotech steering committee will be there. Another very, very important thing, I'll share this with you. You know, ragging. Ragging. Yeah. Students go do ragging, okay? Or students may misbehave. Unofficial. Off oh, 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 the record, yes. Please. Madam, no CPI, no ma'am. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, what I'm trying to say is do you look at our students' behavior? They are in bioethics, they are in the bioethics student wing. And if you catch one of them stealing, somebody had robbed a card, uh, debit card, someone, you know, and misused or some other, this is called as critical incident reporting. That also should be added into our logbook. In addition to um, formative as a learning, uh, not only assessment, it, it is proven. If I am attending a program, 3D program, means Princey is interested. Princey is interested in the uh, um, World Biotics Day I attended. I submitted a poster. So don't you need to evaluate? Those are interest indicators. These are, um, we follow this for pharmacology, that is different, but I would like to follow that for biotics too, interest indicators. That is, uh, do you mark them for having participated in a program? Would you consider that as a part of 
yeah, put it as an assessment and give them that credit. Otherwise, see what you and I are doing. Why have you all come here? Wasting your beautiful Sunday. Interest. That's what. Don't you need to be rewarded, Dr. Srinivas? <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about students who are participating in the World Bibles competition. I'm conducting a program uh, or they're attending ethos. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Derek, your students won the prize in Amritsar. Right. So what did we do? So did you add it to their whole list? So critical in, in the critical incident reporting, interest indicators will all help. My students do ICMR STS project. That's fine. They did it. They got that money and they got the fame. But did you add it in pharmacology or in um, surgery or in other subject that they have done a research and given them some actual yeah, incentive as a marks or a something. We don't do that. So that's why I would add these two together as a point. What is your thoughts on this? Think pair share which you said. Madam, think pair share. See, the, they think that the, a pair of people come to a conclusion and they share their uh, knowledge. So that at that moment of time, you are assessing actually what they have learned is correct or not. Think pair share. That, the, 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 when the, like all, all four of us have thought and we have shared. And now you want, you have, as a teacher, you have uh, realized whether we know something or not. Yeah. Now, yeah, and then they, when they share it, a uh, large group or the big classrooms where you have 150 and 250 where you cannot uh, concentrate on each and every uh, yeah. Dr. Anand, I want to share uh, one experience uh, with you. It's, uh, now the children are also uh, changing their uh, thinking process has been changed. It's not that bioethics, you need to make it as a regulation and then only children will give. Because these are 500 students, the nursing students, as well as the medical students, I think all most of the teachers, you all part uh, our children. They ask the questions which you will get amazed. So much of interest they had. And even after the out of the classroom also, after the class is over, they come and pose so many questions to us. It is that they are interested. It is not that they don't. It is that we are not giving to them. Yes. Submit your assessment. Good afternoon, everyone. Coming to the summit here. Assessment in Biotics Education. 
uh, here we are assessing all the domains uh, from morning till now we are all familiar with all these <laughs> parts so just uh, the cognitive domain then uh, affective domain psychomotor domain and as since morning we know that uh, this assessment drives learning especially at the ug and the postgraduate level and uh, it will take us towards the desirable direction this, uh, uh, this is actually a circle, set the goals and priorities, translate into objectives, design assessment, review program, uh, conduct summative assessment, evaluation, use results for improvements. Uh, assessment in the form of written, oral, and biology. So uh, we have uh, essay questions, but uh, here I am going to omit the essay questions because now in the era of uh, Competency based uh, uh, CBME, that is the competency based medical education, we usually go for uh, modified essay questions. Then uh, I, I will just cite one example for each uh, short answer questions. We have also taken true or false format, uh, which will help for the average students who uh, know uh, some uh, part about the uh, subject. Then MCQs, extended uh, matching questions. Then coming to the oral and viva, that is, uh, we will be taking the left part. Essay question, I will om omit it. Then uh, modified essay question, here we will be covering the, uh, what the student has gained knowledge about the uh, knowledge uh, and uh, how he is going, how it, he has, he or she has understood the knowledge and it will be covering the problem solving skills, but it has limitations that constructions of questions will be time consuming and a careful training is needed for the marking technique of these questions. And uh, advantage of this is that it has a better reliability than the essay question and it also can aid as a resource for a lecture class or it can also be a catalyst for the small group uh, discussion. Here, just I have cited one example. Uh, Mrs. X is a 35 year old female married to Mr. Y for five years and trying to start a family, but not successful. So, how would you deal with her request and what would be your concern? And uh, uh, same, uh, next day, Mr. Y comes to see you, but both husband and wife don't know that they are meeting the same physician. So, how would you deal with this situation? Here, the scenarios will be more detailed. And the questions will be more specific. Uh, when we compare these modified essay questions to MCQs, it is said that the uh, MCQs are better able to assess the higher cognitive level compared to the modified essay questions. Just I will cite one more example about the modified essay question that uh, a 45 year old male has come to your clinic he is diagnosed with advanced stage of uh, CS stomach. He is not eating properly past four days and not interacting with family members. He wants to discuss with you and uh, he says that chemotherapy is not working. I want to die. Help me, doctor. So how will you respond to his request and what needs to be avoided during the communication? Now coming to the short answer questions. Here we will be covering the factual knowledge uh, and comprehension then, and also the problem solving skills. The limitations here are uh, clear marking is required and the complex issues may be difficult to address in short answer questions. The advantage of this is uh, queuing or guessing is avoided. And the concise answer is required. Level of reliability is more. It can also cover wide range of outcome efficiently. It can be used as a measure of factual recall or comprehension of information. Uh, if answers are precise and brief, we can also go for computerized marking. Uh, here I have just taken a topic that is disclosure. So the questions can be what is disclosure and why is disclosure important? How should I approach disclosure in practice? What are the elements of disclosure? This is just a topic from our biotics. Uh, short notes uh, added by our team, that is surrogacy in decision making, ethics involving industry, autonomy and shared responsibilities, 
the efficiency and normal efficiency. Again, these are few examples of the short moves. Uh, selected response questions is true or false format can also be uh, taken. Here we uh, assess the factual knowledge and comprehension, and it is easy for marking system, but uh, the main disadvantage of this is uh, guessing of the correct answer, even though the student is not knowledgeable and the uh, candidate can score 50% correct and 50% wrong. So the uh, greater the opportunity for guessing, there is less reliability. It uh, encourages uh, road learning. Just one example, uh, topic chosen is voluntary mess. There are two statements I have taken. We can put some five statements or five, five marks question can be considered over here. In the context of consent, voluntariness refers to a patient's right to make treatment decision and decisions about his or her personal information free of any undue influence. This is just a statement. Or a voluntariness is not a legal requirement of valid consent. Say true or false. Next is uh, all we are very much familiar about the MCQs. So MCQs here we are check, uh, assessing the factual knowledge, comprehension, and its application. Its advantage is that uh, uh, good content validity, high reliability, and uh, marking system is easy. The limitations are uh, writing higher order question may be challenging, and uh, it may promote road learning. Topic, uh, just uh, I have cited one example about uh, brain death. We have given uh, multiple choices here. Now this is about the extended matching question format. Uh, they are modified type of MCQs and it consists of four components, a theme, then we have a uh, multiple list of options. It may be eight to uh, 12 list of options then multiple stems and a leading question. The theme will include a general uh, bioethics topic. List of options will be eight to 12 responses. Then stems are clinical weakness. Then the leading question and the students are expected to select one option. Here we assess the all uh, factual knowledge, comprehension, and application of problem solving skill. Its advantage is good content validity, high reliability, and easy to mark. But the limitation is uh, writing higher order question is uh, really challenging because you should know uh, in depth to go for this extended ma uh, matching questions. I have just uh, prepared one uh, example for this. The theme which I have selected is bio banking and a list of options. Eight to uh, 12 list of options I have taken. That is A to K. Uh, about the bio banking I have mentioned here. The human genome project and the international. You can just read through these. Uh, I will just read the questions which I have. Three questions I have put. Uh, the answer will be in these 12 options. It will cover the whole uh, part of the biobanking topic. So these are all the uh, list of options. The questions will be in the recent trend. What is the key ethical issue for biobanking? Uh, answer is there in the 12 li uh, list of options. Then what is the aim of population biobank? Then for better understanding of the role of genes in health and disease and its interaction with the environment, choose the option you would like to proceed. Choose the correct option from the list. Uh, coming to the oral and viral OC, uh, sir, will we, you want to continue? Okay, I will continue. It can be applied to discriminate the borderline and distinction candidates at this disadvantage it is time consuming, subjective, trained examiners are required. OSCE, uh, clinical skills and communication domain, 
advantage it is ob uh, objective type good validity and reliability limitation expensive in terms of resources this is one example i think uh, sukumar sir will discuss later i thought it is uh, sir's contribution for this short cases and long cases can be choose uh, uh, taken and can decide upon that how the students uh, history taking how the approach of the students or case scenarios can also be given here and assignments uh, uh, learning activities formative assessments with feedback certified skills this is uh, added again by sir so e portfolio project submission or uh, dissertation submission and final presentation uh, my references sir uh, uh, this uh, textbook of medical education by karen walsh and the uh, cambridge textbook of biophysics by beans anybody can comment something you want to say about the team the whole work was a real team work I have come prepared with you. I have come prepared with the exact questions also. So we see with my PPT. Madam also has come with PPT. I am sorry also contributed. And finally, finally, Madam also with with wisdom. She polished her thing and final outcome is there. Thank you, sir. Can someone summarize? I think uh, already we have spoken so much about assessment. Now this is about summative assessment, where it is the final thing, either pass or fail or grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting the tools. Right now, the tools which are used for summative assessment is based on the utility model of Van der Meulen. 2005, the points are reliability. No, I don't know. Let me give you that. Tool, tools are only essays. Okay. Modified essay questions, yes, modified. short answers, and uh, uh, MCQs, viva, and often. Cognitive will be modified essay questions. Scenario and ask for things, options that can give right there. Why will we see? Can also test it if they ask if a psychopath. Case business. Yeah. There is nothing like one tool will fit for everything. Number one. So you have used multiple tools and as and when whatever domain you are going to test, that depends on this thing. Wait, written and viva should be separate. Written assessment, summative assessment, followed by oral and viva. Depending whatever biases we need to have, we can take case scenarios. And we can give also simulated questions if you don't have real cases. You can train the simulated questions and in such a way that he will, uh, the patient will be telling the same to all the students, and OSCE stations can also be there. OSCE stations oh, can all be... see we are talking about the three domains, yes. So, whatever you've said is only for the public, no, 